Day. To discuss all things International Women's Day, I'm joined in the studio by Sam Cleesby. She's a blogger and health activist. I've got Sharon Squires with me. She's uh, given talks on the role of women in Sheffield and uh, she belongs to an organisation we'll talk to her about a little bit more in a while. I've also got Shipra Deb with me and she was up for Asian Women Women of Achievement Awards last year and they're going to talk to me and uh, discuss some of the things that are connected with uh, International Women's Day. So I've revealed, uh, coming up to 50 years old, Sharon, that I've never done anything to mark uh, International Women's Day before. Have you done something? Do you do something every year? Um, yeah, I do. I have done over the last, probably the last 10 years or so I was saying earlier uh, to to your other guests that for me when I was younger International Women's Day didn't really mean anything or, or I had quite um, probably quite sort of uh, negative perceptions of it be either being full of sort of very middle class women and at that point I didn't see myself as one I think I am I have to admit to being one now or extreme sort of feminists and although I actually do call myself a feminist I, I had a sort of stereotype but it was actually I I got involved when my daughters I have two daughters were very young and there was just an event on in uh, the place where I was living and it was just women getting together talking about becoming they actually just talk about becoming new moms but it was a really really good event and then I sat there thinking uh, you know i'm fairly relaxed about it for me it's a day to talk about women what's happening to women what ha what's happening to women across the world that mm. i don't know an awful lot about what's happening to women in britain and as you know paulette i'm quite interested about what's happening to women in sheffield and south yorkshire as well so i see it as a day that m that gives us the space just to have those conversations and also because i have two daughters i think those are really important conversations so I know the right things are happening to give my girls the sort of chances I want them to have. Are they interested in International Women's yeah, Day? Yeah, they both. They, we all we actually send out each other a text saying Happy International Women's Day to each other. And they both, they don't get like really, really involved, but they will both be going to events. Um, one is my oldest daughter runs her own business. So one, like... Uh, uh, the guests um she's going to an event about women in business mm. and the other daughter is quite political and she's going into an event about why so many women are leaving politics rather right. than we need more women to get involved so they're just going to one event but you know i'm quite proud of them really yeah. that they're doing that sort of stuff what about you then sam because you've got you've got a one have you got one daughter i've got one daughter and two sons yes and what about international women's day what does it mean to them do you think i don't think it meant very much until I started talking about the event that I'm being part of, which is at, um, at uh, Experience Barnsley uh, at the Town Hall. And it started a great conversation at home with the children about what it is to be a woman, how to celebrate being a woman, and how we're all feminists, even though mm. my son's a feminist and my husband's a feminist, because it's just about equality for women. And that's interesting. You talk about celebrating women. Do we have to celebrate men? I never really hear that phrase used for men. What do you think that is? I think it's it's like my kids say to me on Mother's Day, um, why isn't there a Children's Day? <laughs> and I say, every other day of the year's Children's <laughs> Day. I think maybe every other day of the year's International Men's mm. Day. So it's just a nice, it's a nice time for everyone to to be able to shout out loud and celebrate and be part of different uh, events throughout Yorkshire. But is it that straightforward? Is every other day, um, would you say, Shipra, is every other day International Men's Day? Is it that simple anymore, do you reckon? No, I don't think so. I mean, I, I first got interested in the whole issue of what women do and what their roles are when I came into business. And that's when I realised that actually a lot of people were talking about what women do, how difficult it is for women to climb the ladder, how there's a lack the higher you go up the rankings in terms of women. But the actual, there's no clear cut answer to that. I think there are several reasons along the way of which nature plays a big role in it. And I think we just can't ignore that and say, well, it's, 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 it's a simple answer. We also have to look at the historical data and from how women's roles have evolved over time. I think today's, I think today to be a woman is tough 
because the roles are not as clear cut. Before it used to be the men were the providers, the women were the homemakers. Today, those kind of boundaries are a little bit more jaded and people are interloping into each other's roles. But then if I spoke to my mum and I talked about the role of women today, I don't think she would say that our role is as tough as her role was, Sharon. So you're saying, Deb, that you're saying that, um, uh, Cip- uh, Shipra, sorry, you're saying that um, you think the w- women's role is tough today. Is it just that women's role is always going to be tough then, Sharon? Um, I mean, I agree. I agree. It's complicated. And my, my mum was a really clever, is, she is, <laughs> my mum is a very <laughs> clever uh, woman. And I hope she's not listening. She will probably I is, hope though. she is. <laughs> <laughs> probably <laughs> coming for you. <laughs> um, um, who wanted to, I mean, we, 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 she grew up in London and she wanted to go um, to grammar school, but she had two brothers. And, you know, it's a, it's a classic story. It's the same uh, for lots and lots of people. And her father said, no, I will buy a school uniform for the boys, but I won't buy it because actually your role is to leave and get married and be yeah, someone so. else's responsibility. And I just think she's never really got over that. So, so like, you know, like we we've been saying, she spent a lot of time. She had three girls, and she spent a lot of time encouraging us to do what we wanted to mm. do. Um, and I think that's really what it's fundamentally about, isn't it? It's about feeling you can make the choices you want to make. So, if you want to go, if you want to set up your own business and be a successful businesswoman or a successful uh, blogger and organiser or for me somebody who tries to make a difference through working mm. in the public sector that's our choices and, and and if you want to stay at home and look after your kids and you know I have stayed at home and looked after my kids when they were younger that's also a really positive mm. choice and if you want to do both yeah which is what <laughs> I did I work part time and it is and I, I suppose going back to your que- question I mean I, I think I I think it's hard for lots of people. I think people work very long hours, men and women. I think, you know, childcare is very hard and more men are sharing in childcare. So I don't think it's that simple as a gender difference. But having said that, I would say that I sometimes think women tend to lose out a bit. They do tend to pick up most of the housework, most of the childcare. You know, single mothers can have a quite a hard time. I think women don't get the same opportunities that men get and I just think when you talked about International Men's Day you know, whenever you see any meeting of international heads of state or you know except for Angela Merkel it's blokes isn't it on the whole and that's what I that's what I see in my head when there's any international gathering 90% of the people will be men. Yeah, 81333 to get in touch on BBC Radio Sheffield this afternoon. If you want to ask a question, I've got three S's, haven't I? I've got Sharon, <laughs> Sam and I've got Shipra and mm. we're talking about uh, International Women's Day. You can ask us a question if you want to or you can get in. Tre- you can get involved by telling us about an event that you're aware of that's happening tomorrow or over the weekend to mark International Women's Day. BBC Radio Sheffield, let's have the Jags. <laughs> Call me if you're feeling blue You tell me I don't pay attention to you But if you want to know Just wear them Back of my hand, BBC Radio Sheffield, you're listening to Paulette. I've got Sam Cleesby with me, I've got Sharon Squires, I've got Shipra Deb with me, and uh, we're talking about International Women's Day. You can join in the discussion if you want, if you've got a question that's been raised from anything we're talking about, 81333 to text, it's 0114 to give us a call. Something I noticed on Channel 4 News, actually it was yesterday, um, was uh, changes in Spain. Um, they were talking about uh, Spain. Spain's Conservative government that it's passed its first parliamentary hurdle uh, that would allow abortions only in the case of rape or danger to life. The current law allows abortion on demand up to 14 weeks and easy access to the morning after pill. So um, there's been a lot of, uh, you know, they had, I think it was a Godmother's Day they were talking about that they had yesterday in Spain and a lot of the women were getting very angry about this. And uh, we were talking just now, weren't we, while the music was on, about some worrying trends because in one sense it seems that women are moving forward forwards but in another sense in some places and in some parts uh, that women are moving backwards what do you say to that Sam? I think there's a lot of worrying trends at the minute I think there's a lot of things that we worry about for our daughters and the next generation Um, my talk tomorrow is a lot about body image and how women see themselves and 
the, the negative words that women say about themselves and the things that we pass on to our daughters and our, our nieces and, and the children around us. Um, and so, yeah, it's, I think it's quite frightening. Are you, are you worried for your daughter then? How old is she? My daughter's 11 and she has great self-esteem. She's at the age where she still feels happy to talk about her body in a positive way. Um, and I'm not sure what age it, they get to or why there's a sudden change into say, from saying, my legs are great because they run really, really mm -hmm. fast, to, oh, I'm so fat, I don't look like the girls on the TV. And that's quite frightening. And I think that it's our responsibility as women to, to pass on a real positive body image to our children. And what about men's responsibility in this and what role do men play in this supporting of positive body images for women? I think men play a massive role. I, I teach my sons as much as I teach my daughter about the importance of respect for one another, not just for women, but just respect for one another. That's, mm. that's a massive thing. So, BBC Radio Sheffield, just to, to remind you, we're having a chat for International Women's Day. I've got Sam, Sharon and Shipra with me. Uh, Shipra, we're talking about worrying trends. Is there anything that you've noticed? You have I pronounced your name right? Because she's smiling. <laughs> That's always a sign that I've not pronounced someone's name right. No, no, it's perfectly I've had right. I've done all right. Okay, then. I, I think, you know, in, in terms of what I do, I have, a, I have a business where I see lots of women at different stages in their lives. So, for example, I see a lot of grandparents when they come in with their grandchildren. I see lots of new mums when they come in. I see mums with a bit older children. And I see mums who are sort of just coming out of that phase. And it's quite interesting to see how much the self-esteem issue is still there. I think when you have a, a child, you have got to remember that behind that child, I mean, I've got three children, and behind that somewhere there's some part of me that still believes that when I gave birth to my children, I gave birth to my brains along with my placenta. So there is that whole self-esteem thing. So do you change that much then, do you think, when you have children? I think there's a lot of hormonal things happening. There's a lot of... Is it not that just that you're focused on this person and you've got to help this person to survive and it's well, your course, responsibility? That's a huge thing, yeah, isn't it? Yes, there's an unconditional love that comes with that. But then alongside that comes the extreme tiredness from the lack of sleep. There's a lot of physical changes that your body has never experienced before. And those kind of changes are really unthinkable unless you're a woman and does that affect your self-esteem then as I, a, a I think so clearly when you know if you were used to wearing nice lovely dresses and then you go to wearing blouses that you can lift up it, there's a difference and then you're also conscious about what kind of image you're portraying for that serious part of a large part of a woman's life i think so it it, it is up to us to say actually what we do is really important and whatever phase we go through we have to get through but even whilst we're doing that it we're still proud to do that so do we feel forced then you know is there an element of being forced to do something that probably doesn't feel natural you know like you know maybe when you've just had children you you're the place that you work once you're back in full time is there a sense of us being forced to to do things that are not comfortable for us sharon do you think as women well i mean it's quite quite a long time i mean to reassure people i I think I've become a much better and cleverer person, as mm. for me personally, um, as a result of having children. Because I think I was a bit, uh, had a tendency to be a bit self-obsessed before, mm. uh, you know, which was sort of good because I, I, I got on and did lots of things mm. that you needed to be. Uh, but the, um, I mean, I think there's for me there's always been a tension about the world of work and the world of my home and I, and that is about my children but it's also about you know having enough time and energy to be a decent partner to so um, constantly having to choose yeah, and, and what feeling good at both or feeling well, that you're actually missing the market on well both. i think work can just take up too much time i did go part-time when i was younger but that you know then there was a period where it actually financially that wasn't so much of an option and then there was a period where if i did want to progress at work being part-time would have stopped me you know getting mm. getting any further so um so i think the world of work and the world you know the world of home and family and friends it there's always seems to be it's always like you've got these balls and you're juggling i'm sure mm. we all feel like that and you're juggling them but you never probably and what gets lost has always got lost in that is me really mm. so i don't look after my you know i don't 
I, I don't exercise as much as I should and I don't eat as well as I should and I probably don't re- relax as much as I should. I mean, I think for me, I'm, I'm just going to say in, wor- in worrying trends, there's sort of two levels. One is uh, uh, my, my girls are, are, you both went to university and I worry about the cost of university now and I worry um, at the, you know, um, for all young people. And, mm. that. and then, but they've left university and they're now in the world of work. And it seems to me, I remember fighting when I was younger for equal opportunities, for people to know how, what jobs were there. Now it's all, it's all really hard to work out how you get to jobs, how you network. And I think mm. young women are losing out. So there are a lot more factors to consider yeah, other than yourself that's right. and your decisions. And suppose. how you present yourself and some of the sort of interviews they're asked to go to, I think, you know. And then I th- the last thing I say, there is there was a big report out, and I can't remember the details out, but just about sort of violence against women mm-hmm. and how violence against women is being used um, across the world as, you know, as part of war. You know, it's uh, war is no longer just about guns and things. It's actually about purposely using violence against women you know violence against women in, in some countries is just really scary and that worries me because it worries me thinking well where am I going to travel if my girls suddenly say they're going to go on holiday somewhere I start thinking actually how safe is that place for women but it, but it's just scary for those women who live mm. in those places. You've raised a couple of interesting points. We'll discuss them in a little bit more detail in a while. BBC Radio Sheffield, Sam Cleesby, Sharon Squires and Shipra Deb have uh, joined me to talk about International Women's Day. We'll continue our discussion, including um, I went to an off-the-shelf event for Agony Aunt Irma Kurtz on Monday and she said that she thought that one of the biggest vices that women had today was the bitchiness against each other. We'll discuss that as well on BBC Radio Radio Sheffield this afternoon. BBC Radio Sheffield. The Blades are just 90 minutes away from... But the other two, other three of us haven't, no. really. Excuses, then. Have you got any excuses, Shipper? I, I, don't, I don't really think of myself when in my day-to-day life, in what I do. I don't think of myself as a woman in something. I just think of myself as this is what I do and this is what I have to do and this is where I need to reach and do you I think go it with holds, that. Do you think it holds women back then to think of themselves as a woman in the equation? Well, certainly for me, when I first started up, it was really heart-wrenching because I had to get past that guilt of maybe not being such a great homemaker, being a rubbish mom, and I'd have to not see my kids as much and maybe I couldn't do these other roles that I was traditionally prepared for and I was doing something that I knew nothing about. So I I had to get past that guilt and then find myself in a position where I was comfortable to move forward. But my my thinking at that point was that if I did achieve what I wanted to achieve, then I would serve as a role model for my children. And as a role model for other people, because you are in the stars, 50 most influential people in business. You're one of six women, only six women out of 50. What does that feel like then? Do you feel that you are making a difference to other people's lives, other women's lives? I would like to think I am. I think day to day I make a difference. Um... On, on a wider thinking scale, I'd like to think I do make a difference. And if, if anyone around, I mean, a lot of people have approached me and I do tend to give a lot of advice and things like that and trying to give people maybe a route or maybe a platform. So if I, fe- if I can see myself providing that kind of inspirational role model, then I think I'm doing well. Interesting, though, like I was saying earlier that I met Irma Kurtz from a, a company magazine, The Agony Ant, and she, she's done it for 40 years. She came as part of the off-the-shelf kind of build-up to International Women's Day. I spoke to her on Monday, and she said one of the big things that held women back was how they treat each other, how bitchy we can be to each other. What do you think about that, Sam? Has she got a point? I think she has got a point. Um, and I'm not sure why we do it to each other. I think there's always been a massive debate of working mums versus stay-at-home mums. And the fact is, we're all just mums and we're all just trying to get through each day. And I think it comes from, if you feel that somebody's attacking you as a mother, you're immediately on the defensive. So if you're a stay-at-home mum and you hear somebody saying something slightly negative about that, your your first line of... of defense is attack mm. and so you you it an argument starts where there shouldn't be an argument because we're all just trying to do his best is it because of the guilt you think sharon 
that women um that women are nasty to oh, each other sometimes I, i'm not i think it's quite complicated mm. I, I remember um you know when i was at school you know learning that women were officially the property of men before <laughs> and in the victorian era in britain Incredible. and things like that and so yeah, before they could divorce and things like that and i think that there are in in all our cultures and there's lots of different cultures stereotypical images of what women should be a sort of perfect woman and that's how she should physically look that's how she should behave that's how she should be a mother and i think those stereotypes are really really powerful and i think we women hold those stereotypes as much as men do um and well, I think if we're attacking each other, does that not let, let men off the hook then, do you well, think? Well, um, no, I'm not, no, because I think, you know, men perpetuate those, those stereotypes as well. That, although, interestingly, you know, things like uh, you were talking earlier, Sam, about, you know, body image and, mm. you know, I'm not, I think women... Uh, I mean, there's the fashion industry that I do, I personally have a problem with because, you know, those women are so thin yeah. and uh, they're ill, really thin. And, but, and my, when my daughters were a bit older, when they went to secondary school and all the, despite uh, lots of self-confidence, those, you know, who, being called fat was like the end of the world. Mm. Uh, I, I, and they weren't fat at all. They were just average size. So, so I think that there are things like the fashion and men's men's role in running fashion injury. But a lot of my mates who are blokes, they don't seem to even notice what size women mm. are really. But women, you know, women come up to me, uh, recently lost a bit of weight, and women come up and say... God, you've lost so much weight. You've done so well, and it feels—it's like we're always scrutinising each other and putting ourselves down. You know, we're in a room and think, "Oh, I'm the fattest person in this room." And you're probably not. It's just that you're going to put yourself down. So How I think it, I, find, I find it quite complicated. Yes, actually, it isn't as simple mm. as a yeah. couple of responses here. People have got in touch on the text. Patrick says, "I'm sorry, Paula. I agree with you. Many women don't know they're born today." He says, "Our mothers had it tough. Many women today could not cope with what they had to do in their daily lives." Would you like to respond to Patrick? Shipra. <laughs> I don't know quite what to say to that. I, I think, I, well, I think it's wrong, actually. I, I think women have a harder job today and lots in lots of cases a family survives because of a woman's ability to adapt to every single role that's put in front of her. I completely agree. Sam agrees with that. Sharon, would you like to yeah. make a quick comment? Yeah, <laughs> unanimous on that one. <laughs> Jed in Lane Tops got in touch on the text. I think a lot of women have had more choices than men, says this text. I'm 50. A lot of the men I've worked with would have loved to spend more time with their children. The pressure has been on the man to provide. A lot of women get a better family work mix. What would you say to Jed then? Because it's, it's a fair point that he's making, isn't it? Some men would prefer to be the ones that stay at home. And I know some of my friends have preferred their fellas to stay with the kids to be honest i think um for my family four or five years ago we decided to make a massive change so that the work-life balance was better for both me and my husband um and we started our own business we we started a photography business so that we both work from home one of us is always there for childcare because i do think it is best for one parent to be there to do the childcare when the when the children are younger and it's about decisions we make and I think that as a society we have better choices these days for both men and for women. And that's a good thing to have more choices surely, Sharon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I, and we make her we make her I mean it can be a bit overwhelming, can't yes, it? it? Having those can. choices. It can. I get overwhelmed yes, thinking I do. Yeah. what do I want to do with my life now? And I, and also, you know, I d I don't know, I mean how do, do people really have lots of choices because I, I know that the statistics say that there are lots of families out there that require both the man and the woman mm, to go to work to survive right. you know they're poor they're on low incomes and to survive so how much choice do people really really have but I mean I'm older than Sam and 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 we both went Part time when they when our children. So I, I think men can men yes. do have the choice if they want to yeah. to go part time. I or think not Jed probably work. feels yeah. that he's missed the boat a bit there. Uh, let's just talk a bit. Bless his heart. Let's just talk about the uh, events that we've got tomorrow. Uh, what events happening in Sheffield tomorrow, Sharon? Well, I think I think there's lots and lots of events open, uh, happening in Sheffield across the city and different. And I think you know on lots of different communities. The one I know most about is that Sheffield City Council uh, has opened is opened up the town hall 
so it'll be open all day from about so i think sort of 9 30 10 on to about 3 30 so for anyone men and women who are women and men i should say who are in the city and to go in and there's lots and lots of really interesting things happening throughout the day lots of sort of showcasing of different things different women across the city are doing uh, the thing i've been particularly involved in which happens later on in the afternoon is is trying to promote um the enormous talent of women in the city uh and their economic contribution to city because as you know i got a bit frustrated by only having six women in the top 50 because i mm. personally believe there's a lot more influential yeah. and successful women in this city um and I, that list to me reflected something that we need to challenge about the culture so it's a discussion Sheffield. that's going to be had tomorrow i'm going to be there yeah. to chair it from 1 30 so you we're are. going to be having to talk about that and just to remind us of your event then sam before you um go. i'm doing a talk at uh, barnsley town hall with experience Barnsley, there's uh, five speakers for the day. Um, uh, Egyptologist Joanne Fletcher, who I think is talking about Egyptian feminists, so I can't wait oh, to that hear that. Good, yeah. um, and there's uh, Katie Edwards, Lorna Warren, and Anna Fay, and then my talk at the end at three o'clock i'm finishing off the day so it's from one o'clock and uh, i think this ticket's still available through experience barnsley wonderful well it's been lovely to talk to all three of you thank you very much for joining us on bbc radio sheffield we've only touched the top of the tip 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 not even 10 percent of this iceberg have we <laughs> sam cleesby sharon squires and shipra deb thank you for joining us on bbc radio sheffield oh. and we're going to be uh, singing loudly with some opera after the everly I was going to say Everly Pregnant, but I meant Everly Brothers. <laughs> <laughs>